Hello. Hello. Can I have everybody attention, please? We're okay? Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I want to thank the resident and my colleagues in city council official and all those who are attending this meeting today. The resident, I hope that you have watched those Brockton City Council meeting and uh, that you have uh, listened to the topic and discussed it. The purpose for this meeting today is for me to listen it to the public and understand your concern and areas prioritized. Therefore, I am facilitating this worthy meeting where we have in attend or uh, DPW, Pat Will, he's not here right now, but he's gonna be here soon. We have, uh, we supposedly have like, you know, school uh, superintendent, Michael Toms. I believe he's in Zoe, he's not here right now. And then we have a Mayor Wilgram from Old Colony, uh, Plain City Councilor. And uh, shortly we're gonna have a Brockton Police Captain Mark Pistaro and Brockton Director of Planning and Economic Development, Rob and May, and, uh, and my colleague, City Councilor, and Michael Bray, and uh, Team Cruz. I hope I don't miss anybody. Uh, we have, like, you know, former uh, Worthy to City Councilor, Tom Monahill. <laughs> the rule is today, the meeting is to please raise your hand and be organized before you speak so we can provide you with the microphone. Jim Brownlee, be our microphone facilitator. To begin, what is the question or concern a wounded resident to like and discuss that this hour now will be open for? And then now I'm gonna start it Yes, uh, we have a translator, actually. We have a um, Spanish translator. We have a Cambridge translator. We're going to do a little translation right now before we start it. Boa tarde para tudo alguém que está ali. A Maria Tavares, a City Councilor de Brockton, World 2. Eu só te agradeço a todo o residente que está ali hoje. Eu agradeço a todo a gente que trabalha na cidade, a, que está ali hoje. Ah, para nós bem, para nós bem fazer perguntas, está espera, amanhã só está hoje a ah, reunião que eles têm feito na cidade, entre city councils com city officials ah, na cidade. Senhores de hoje, tudo que lá, senhores, tudo e pergunta que nós têm, a ah, nós ah, e preocupação de que aqui mesmo compo ali na cidade de Brockton. Hoje é uma grande oportunidade para nós, para nós estar ali, para nós fazer que as perguntas lá. So, um, e nós temos que levantar, quem é que está a querer fazer pergunta? Nós está levantando a mão, a Jamal está levando o nosso microfone, nós está falando um de cada vez, assim para não poder entender o companheiro, agora que no, uh, já ouvi o nosso concerno, não está escrevendo, não está tomando e, uh, apontamento, não está apontando, depois não está adressando a uh, nossa preocupação que nós temos. Ok? Obrigada, Zijá. I, uh, I think, believe it, we're going to start with you. Uh, Robin May, uh, the Director of the Planning Economic Development. I don't know if you want to stand up, introduce yourself, tell where you are, and uh, how can we work together. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Bon tarde. Uh, buenas noches. And bon... Bon noche. Uh, that's close. I'm sorry. I'm still working on it. Um, I'm Rob May. I'm Director of Planning and Economic Development. And um, I'm really happy to be here in Ward 2 uh, to give you all an update of what we've been working on uh, in, in, in this ward. 
uh, is one of the more dynamic wards because it contains half of downtown. And we've been very excited. I, I brought a, a, a small map and I have handouts uh, for everyone to take a look at. But um, we have been working with the uh, Commonwealth who prepared a um, local rapid recovery um, grant uh, plan for us, which is up on our website. But it talks about the activities that we think are important to bringing businesses back to downtown, to restoring our economy. And um, there's a lot of really good information on that plan. But one of the priority projects that we've had was producing this map that shows all the uh, development that has been completed in the last few years and development that we're planning for in the future. So in the last 10 years, we have, um, through three different administrations, um, and everybody working together with City Council, been able to prepare two um, urban renewal plans downtown. And we work very closely with um, Robert Jenkins at the Brockton Redevelopment Authority to implement those plans. And so for over the last 10 years, we've created over 380 uh, residential units that are either completed, uh, let me take that back, that, that are completed or are under construction right this, this minute. There's another um, uh, 280 that are in the planning pipeline. So there's a lot of interesting development that's going on downtown, but it's not all about residential development. So over the past 10 years, we've also been able to um, either create new or rehabilitate existing commercial space of, uh, in the amount of 275,000 square feet of commercial space. So that includes things like the expansion and redevelopment of W.B. Mason and their office space. It includes um, Vicente's Tropical. It includes um, smaller space like um, the new Brockton Beer that's opening up uh, next month. It's not wood, but I'm knocking wood. It's supposed to be next month. And, um, and smaller sites throughout the city. So we're, we're excited that we have this nice mix of development downtown. Um, you know, as you know, um, the biggest investment that we're going to see on the public side is a new public safety um, complex. It's going to be just north of here um, on uh, Warren Avenue. And it's going to house a modern police and fire station. It's also going to be home to uh, Brockton's IT department, which means we'll be moving out of Brockton High School. That'll make more space available for, for classrooms at Brockton High School. And we also bring our Brockton Emergency Management Agency over here with a brand new state-of-the-art facility. So we're able to react to everything from emergencies to heavy snowstorms to flooding. Um, we'll be able to be up and running um, instantaneously. So the mayor is very excited about these activities. Um, we're also in the middle of a, uh, a broadband study. So we're looking at um, and we're asking people about their um, internet access. And so I, I handed out a survey and I hope to collect them uh, from you later this evening. But we'd really like to know what you think of your current um, internet service provider. Um, how, you know, if you can share with us how much you're paying. Um, but you know, we want to know the good things and we want to know the bad things. And we're going to be putting together a plan um, and a series of recommendations to City Council. Uh, we're looking at how do we make uh, the internet affordable for everyone, accessible for everyone. Um, how do we make sure that it's we have um, the highest and best uh, quality service uh, throughout the community, not just in you know the West Side or or you know uh, in a few uh, luxury apartment complexes. But how do we make sure that we have these utilities right in front of each and everybody's house, and that it's at a, a price that everybody can afford? So we're um, we're in the middle of that planning process now, and um, we hope to have a couple more public meetings as we progress. Uh, so stay tuned for that. 
And um, if you could, again, share the, uh, the survey and let us know what's, what's happening, we would appreciate that. Um, so I, I am going to, uh, uh, would you like to translate? Good, oh, that's bad. Well, let's sit, let's sit together. You follow a lot of things that you can remember of what he said. So, his name is Robert May. He works in Brockton, in the development of reconstruing Brockton. He brings a map of all the work that he has to do here in Brockton. He said that the world is doing this. He is part of the majority of the redevelopment that he has to do here in Brockton. Okay? So, he is not only for the residence, but also for the construction of the negotiations. He wants to do the construction of the negotiations, but the negotiations also want to do part of it. Os avanços que não são de outros alunos, além de outros alunos. Ah? Ah, também outro coisa que eu falo ali. Ah, é daí um survey. Que o survey me que show nós a nós fazer que o survey essa pergunta que broadband, ah, que internet, serviço de internet eu tenho na Brockton. Um, para nós fazer para hoje para para nós preço, ah, preço que nós a paga. A minha minha saber que coisa que tem um bolinho das Brockton. Ah, e então eu estou fazendo que ele na fim do dia, na fim de noite, de tarde ali, é para recolher que ele sim, também fala de construção de código de police station, não é que está a fazer para polícia, para gente de fire department, IT também gente que está a trabalhar na cozinha internet, que está na Brockton High School, também fica ali na norte a Warren Avenue, que é longe dele. Então, uh, nós hoje não sabemos fazer um bracto bonito, então se torna reconstruir o bracto. Então, é, é aquela que é essa está falando, um, é ele parte daquele projeto. Agora que nós temos tempo, é daí o mapa também. Nós estamos seguindo o mapa, nós estamos hoje, todo o trabalho que se pode fazer na bracto. Obrigado. Oh, e então, as much activity as you see going on downtown, um, is certainly the administration's. Uh, agenda to bring that uh, level of development to a lot of other communities. So we're constantly looking at how can we help Campello, how can we help Monticello, how can we help um, Brockton Heights on the northeast side over by, uh, or northwest side, excuse me, uh, in the area around Brockton Hospital or the area around Good Samaritan Hospital. Um, and, and so we're constantly working with the, both developers, property owners, Businesses that are looking to relocate to the community, um, there's there's not a day goes by that we don't get uh, a call from somebody who uh, is looking to either relocate um, their business or expand their business. And oh, thank you. Um, and uh, it really takes a team effort um, with the city, the redevelopment authority, um, the city councilors. Um, the state is, is a huge partner in our redevelopment efforts, and so um, we're really happy to be able to make this um, a better place for all Brocktonians. And so, um, I don't know if you want to, you want to get Yeah. You, okay, and then we'll take some questions. Oh, okay. It's a big deal that we can only build this place. It's a redevelopment of Brockton for all sides. Hoje se está abrindo a Brockta cada vez mais melhor, cada vez mais bonito para os residentes de ali e também para trazer mais a, a alguém que está a fazer negócios, para ser esse negócio para trazer para ali. Ou então se você quer criar crescente para o negócio, para você crescente para o negócio ali na Brockta, ok? E gosto ali depois de fazer também receber perguntas para a quem me tem perguntas. Uh, so, any questions? If you have questions, please raise your hand, and somebody, Jamal, will be around with a microphone, yeah. and uh, it's probably the same microphone. You're going to be doing a lot of running back and forth. Back and forth. No worries. Hello, um, my name is Hamilton Rodriguez. Uh, I have a two-part question. Number one is uh, Opportunity Zones in War II, where are they? Where are the locations for Opportunity Zones? Secondly, uh, it's my understanding that the city of Brockton has over 200 properties. 
uh, city owned, um, most of them are boarded up. What are the opportunities for individuals, investors that want to come in and buy them? And what's the protocol and the process to buy these uh, 200 properties that are available? Okay, thank you, sir. Um, there are four opportunity zones in Brockton. An opportunity zone is a, um, a federal program that uh, has created an incentive for people to invest in specific areas of the city. Um, there are two that cover downtown. Um, it comes over to uh, Warren Avenue, is the farthest west it goes. Then there's another one um, around the fairgrounds area, and another one at um, uh, around Good Samaritan Hospital. Um, most of the census tracts in Brockton qualified for Opportunity Zone, but we were only allowed uh, to nominate three. We were able to squeeze in four because of the relationship that the city has with the um, uh, with the governor. So we were really happy to be able to get that. And you know, working with our our Beacon Hill delegation to make sure that we're represented there. Um, I'm not sure where that. 200 or so properties comes from. I know that there are properties that um, are in, in foreclosure or tax delinquency. Um, the city of Brockton does own properties, but um, generally um, you know, there's, there's vacant property that the city owns, and it's usually wetlands or conservation area. Um, there are um, some uh, vacant buildings that are um, uh, been taken for tax title, but those are generally sold through the uh, through a tax lien process, um, and that's in the, the tax assessor's office. If the city does have property and is making it available, like um, uh, I, I don't know what a good example would be. Oh, um, uh, Lincoln School. So um, what we put out is, it's called a request for um, proposals. And uh, there's a very uh, laborious state process that we go through to qualify uh, developers and get proposals in. And um, there's a whole criteria of, of whether the application and proposal are meet, the, meet certain standards. But um, for the most part, those are large advertised um, projects. Now, and again, I want to get back to this. I don't know where this 200 number came from. There's very few properties that the city owns that I'm aware of that um, are redevelopable. Now, so how do does an individual uh, tap into this? Um, Opportunity zone, and also how does an individual buy one of these city properties? If they choose to, who do they speak to, who do they call, what are the phone numbers, what's the application process, and so on and so forth. Like, what's what's the protocol? If the, where, where does someone start? To, if the to city do? is putting out a property for, for disposition, um, you'll, you'll learn about it first through city council because they have to vote on the disposition process. Uh, the city then, through the purchasing department, puts out a request for a proposal. We advertise that in um, uh, the enterprise. It's advertised there twice in the legal notices. It's also put up on um, the state registry. Um, and I'm trying to remember the exact name of the state. But it, it, it's a state database of, of all the properties or anything that the municipality is trying to sell or buy. Um, it, it's published in that. And then there's instructions in those applications through the procurement office that says how you fill out the application, how, what, what materials you have to submit to that. So it's, it's, a, it's a cumbersome process, but we get the best um, deal that we can try to get out of that, out of that project. Thank you for your question. I don't buzz. Thank you. I'm told I can be annoying. I didn't know it was just the microphone. Okay, thanks.
Do you want? Oh, okay. Hello. Hello. My name is Liz Angela. Um, with all the things you're telling me you're building, I want to know if you're building anything for mental ill or a teenager, anything that, that can help teenager or mental ill. We have a lot of mental issue in Brockton, and we have a lot of teenager that is going with, with a lot of stuff. All these things they're building, I have, I live in Brockton, I'm a mother. We don't have nothing, nothing for mentally ill or teenagers. What are you doing for that? So if I, if I heard you correctly, it's, what are we... What are we building for people with mental health issues? Yes, all this place you're telling me you're building, all this business and everything, but you guys are doing anything, building anything. Like you have all these housings, mm -hmm. nothing that I can see. Like I have a mental ill brother. My mother is 70 years old. She can't take care of him right now. He has no place to go. He's either had to be on the street or my mom has to be responsible for him. What are you guys doing to help with the adult mental that we have a lot in Brockton? What are you guys doing to help them out? Well, there's a couple of things that I, I will try to address. One is, as we build residential development or as we try to attract residential development into the city of Brockton, we try to balance um, between affordable and, and market rate. And we want to be able to sh make sure that we have housing that's available for everyone. Um, on the other hand, um, with activities and things, um, the city's constantly investing in its parks. I know the mayor is going to be making um, the uh, federal uh, ARPA dollars, American Recovery uh, Plan funding available to the parks department to expand and replace equipment in um, every single one of the city parks. Um, as to services for the mentally um, challenged, I would turn to Jamie if she's, or Jasmine, excuse me, if she's here, if she was here, there she is. Uh, Jasmine does a lot of work with, um, oh, she's got the cards, um, folks with, uh, deal with, with mental illness, with homelessness, with people who need um, special services. So she's the person to contact for that. We have some schools and some buildings. There's one in North Main Street. Uh, I think they're doing the fire something training over there. We have a lot of buildings I see in Brockton that has nothing going on. And to know that we have teenagers that have a lot of issues in Brockton. I have a 16 years old. I have to take him out of Brockton, YMCA out of Brockton, everything out of Brockton, because he doesn't have one place in Brockton that we can go or we can send our kids, our teenagers, to know they're going to be safe, they're going to have somebody to be working with them there. It's nothing in Brockton. What are we doing about that to fix that, especially for our kids? We have a lot of crime in Brockton. That's one thing Brockton should have for our kids. What are you guys doing? What are you building? to have our, our teenager to be there? Well, we've been investing in um, and working with our partners like the YMCA, like the Boys and Girls Club. Boys and Girls Club is trying to build an expansion right now um, for kids. And um, uh, my department is, is not necessarily in the, the service delivery. Project uh, the, the service delivery program. Uh, I know there are um, organizations throughout the city um, that that do that sort of thing, and I think uh, Jasmine is the best person to be able to hook you up with with services. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Jasmine Bratcher. I am the Director of Social Services for the City of Brockton. I am located within the Mayor's Office. Um, I do have some cards. If anyone is interested, they would be able to reach out to me and I can connect you to the services that would offer those safe spaces for your children, 
um, mental health services, I can work on the referrals of people, basically anything you would need that would fall under social work, um, housing, concerns about homelessness, um, safety concerns, you would be able to reach out to me. And if I can't directly connect you to somebody, I would be able to bring you to the person that would. Um, so I am sitting in the corner over there by the door. If anyone wants to chat before we leave, I will have cards um, and I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Para a pergunta que a senhora lá faz, essa faz a pergunta que está cerca de alguém que tem problema de mental, principalmente de meninos, é a pergunta e o que é que esta tem ali na Brockton que pode ajudar nós meninos que têm problema mental? Está só que ela também com alguém que está em casa, que está com a audista. Don e Jamie é social worker ali de Brockton. Ela serve nós comunidade. Ela está passa seu cartão. Ela está indo lá para a porta no lugar de sair. Nós está contactando. Ou nós pode falar com ela antes de nós sair. Depois então nós pode contactar. Ela dá nós mais informação e tem caminho nós para onde que nós deve ir. De ouvir que esse tipo de serviço lá para ajudar para tudo a meus filhos ou família para tudo alguém que está também este que é o tipo de trabalho. Okay. All right. Uh, now we're gonna call Michael Brady, Senator. He's gonna come up here and just talk something. He's gonna tell, like, you know. Uh... Yeah, we one sure. Yes. Hi. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but it was actually oh, that's okay. for you. Oh, sure. Um, before we move on. So, you mentioned affordable housing in Brockton. Where is that? Because I work for housing. I have families every day calling about housing, rent, assistance, everything else. Where's the affordable housing? $2,000 is not affordable for a lot of people in this room. So where are you guys building affordable housing? And by affordable, I don't mean just having like five or 10 affordable unit. Where is there actually affordable housing? Because if we take a survey of everybody in here, most people in here cannot afford $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is not affordable housing. We also don't have shelter, because my job is to put people in shelter. The whole Massachusetts is running out of bed. We have people in Brockton that is being dislocated to Pittsfield. That is three hours away, if anybody doesn't know where that is. It's unfair to take a family from Brockton to put them in Pittsfield because there's no shelter or affordable housing in the city that they live. We're taking families away from families, away from jobs, kids away from school, away from doctors, away from language, because we know there's nobody in Pittsfield that speaks anything but English. So when you say affordable housing, where's affordable housing? Well, we've just had a project completed um, at 121 Main Street by NeighborWorks, that is uh, right downtown, it's in your ward, and that is a 100% uh, affordable product. Um, in uh, Also downtown, we have um, Trinity Financial, who has just um, opened maybe four years ago, uh, the Enterprise uh, 50 Center, and uh, the Enzo uh, Lofts, or Enzo Flats, excuse me, they're um, working on their phase two project right now. That'll deliver another um, hundred or some units. Half of, uh, 40 of those hundred will be affordable. So there's projects all throughout the city that are um, adding to our affordable and our market rate inventory. Affordable, what are we talking about? Because again, I have been to those complex and they're advertising for 15, 18, 2000. Again, that's not affordable for somebody that's making 30, 40,000, maybe less. I make pretty good money, and let me tell you, I cannot afford rent in Brockton. So there are apartments in those, in those buildings that are affordable to people who make zero to 30% area median income. 
and there are apartments that are available to people who make between 30 and 60 percent area median income. Uh, they are out there, and I'm sorry that you know they might not have a unit available right now, but um, uh, there is uh, a high quantity of affordable housing here in Brockton, um, and we keep trying to add to that, um, you know, where we can. So uh, we continue to grow um, both housing products, and we want to make sure that we have more housing units for Brocktonians. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, que a senhora vai ser nessa outra pergunta. Uh, e casa que alguém está por e paga ali na Brockton. E um, mostra para casa que não está por e paga. Alguém que está por e o quanto dinheiro está fazendo para poder conseguir que as casas que está por e paga ali na Brockton. Eu vou ter todo tipo. Essa é para affordable housing é que as casas para de income de que tá trabalha que tá ganha de 30 30 30 da polícia de 30 para ah de 0 para 30 de 30 para 60 mil dólares por ano. Ah, então é pergunta e flama e que as casas lá quase que tá existe ali. Então essa tá fazer mais casa. Essa está vendo mais oportunidade para vender mais unidades que as casas, unidades da ah, apartamentos. Um, para que esse preço que alguém está conseguir pagar. Uh, então, esse é aquele que é um dos projetos que, é, que não tem ali na Brockton, que é para vender mais uh, oportunidade para quem aqui está a fazer aquela quantidade de dinheiro. Lá. Uh, oh, e primeiro coisa que a senhora falou, é para uma casa ali na Brockton, Meio que a verdade é que aquele preço lá tá, existe ali. Para morrer, ele está morrendo ali, meio de ouvir que esse tipo de preço lá é bacana. Então, uma casa é tudo caro. Se você olhar de 1.800, 2.000 dólares para arriba. Ali na Brock. Por acaso, que ele é verdade, né? Só. So, um, e que ele é essa, essa pergunta. Uh, she's asking that she's 84 years old and she doesn't work and how she's able to afford um, the housing in Brockton. Uh, uh, Ah? Mas monfino, zona que tem. Xuxo, parede tudo rombado, que mina idade. Olha a camerca. Olha a camerca. É um parede tudo rombado, um cabo xuxo, que nunca tem para naquele carro. E mais um chino, zona que tem na merda. E não um de quintosta. Parede tudo sujo, estrada tudo sujo, tudo rombado. Que botando aqui, não vai fazer cross, não te senti. Me camerca. Não. Me camerca. Na zona camerca. Não é chuchu, parede rombado. Mochino. Ok? Tramele. Okay. He's saying that where she lives, where she lives, the walls are falling apart and the streets are all dirty. That is not part of the America where she um, thinks that she should be. Because it's all dirty, it's not a feasible for living where she lives in War II. Yeah. If he's not a senhora, he's not a court, he's not a court, Compou a tudo coisa. É para falar com o Jasmine, ah, esta lá para trás falando, pois para falar com ela. Agora, sobre de casa, que a minha está perguntava primeiro, é pergunta se ela mora com a família ou se ela tem. E, 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 sex, e, sec, e section 8, é, que ela ajuda que esta lá, 
que é para ganhar a porção de casa, para ganhar paga aquele outro. Que é a minha cartão, quer dizer? She doesn't make enough for money. She doesn't get enough money to be able to afford all that. She does live for her son, and there she pays all the other bills that uh, the money she's getting on her. Maria José e Fran, no fim, para fala com o Jasmine, é está ponha na direção, no caminho que ele deve mesmo para receber aquela ajuda que ele pode ter acesso a ele. Está bem? Então, obrigado desde já. De nada. Ok. Hi, hi, everyone. Uh, we... Hello. Actually, she is just talking about the concern about our housing. Grace, you want to translate it? All right. I'm the chairman, Michael Brady. Actually, I'm going to call him because that's why I'm call everybody, and you guys can ask a question. And then, like, uh, Mike, you want to take over? Thank you. First of all, let's give Council Maria Tavares a round of applause for hosting this meeting. And thank you for everybody showing up tonight. It's good we are slowly getting back to the somewhat normal way of living. We, we suffered a great pandemic the past couple of years, and we're still not out of the waters yet in the city of Brockton or the Commonwealth. And Brockton was the second highest hit in coronavirus cases, and we had the second highest deaths in the Commonwealth other than Boston. So I encourage everybody, don't believe the internet bloggers out there Trust your doctors, trust your medical experts, and if you have not been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. I'm not a doctor, but I trust the medical experts because we've lost too many lives in the city of Brockton and in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, you want to say that first before I go on? Um, eu obrigado por nos tudo que atende hoje. Ah, de no começo tá vai para aproxima para em normalidade. Que Brockton foi um de que a cidade que mais teve problema de, de Covid, um, segundo outras cidades, cima cima Boston. Essa tem coragem nós para nós uh, seguir nós doutor, um, para nós seguir conselho nós doutor e depois para nós tomar nós vacina, um, para nós continuar a um, proteger nós cabeça, um, ter que no chega e estado normal outra vez. Thank you. The good news, there is a lot of revenue money coming into Brockton through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the federal government. The federal government have, has approved APA money, American Rescue Act, and Brockton received millions and millions of dollars coming in. Some of the money goes directly to the city of Brockton, which Brockton used to spend money for health issues, for getting people vaccinated for the pandemic, 
but there still is more money coming in. So I'll, I'll keep that. In the American Rescue Act, we received $3.66 billion coming into the state of Massachusetts to help all the districts. Now, my district, I represent the city of Brockton, I represent Northeastern, Whitman, Hanson, all the way to Hanover, down to Plimpton. Next year, the district is going to change. I will still have Brockton and some of those towns, but Avon in the south side of Randolph is going to be in the district. But the APA money is just one chunk of the change coming into Brockton. The other thing, as I mentioned, revenue is up. We just passed a $261 billion, million dollar supplemental budget. So some of that money is coming into Brockton as well. We also passed the Student Opportunity Act for the children, for the students, to bring more money into the Commonwealth. And Brockton is going to receive the highest increase of funding for the schools. Now, because of the COVID pandemic, it got put on hold last year. This year, it's being implemented, and it's going to be expended into Brockton in a more timely manner. and I, I am from Brockton, so Brockton is my home. So also, the Senate passed a fiscal 2022 budget that brings $47.6 billion into the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on top of the other funding. And I was also able to get 500000 of the local earmarks for our district to help out refugees from other countries coming into Brockton, to help out veterans, to build a soccer field in one of the communities, and to help with other initiatives. Um, and Thank you, but I, I also want to know, I do not do it alone. We have Representative Jerry Cassidy, Representative Michelle Dubois, and Representative Claire Cronin. She was part of the leadership in the, in the State House. She now is Ambassador to Ireland, so there is an open seat for that district. And please pay attention to the elections coming up, because there's at least three candidates running for the open seat to fill Claire Cronin, Cronin's district. Uh, e and as we all know, our roads are in terrible, terrible condition. So we were able to acquire $200 million from the state, some money coming into Brockton, 
It's called Chapter 90 funding for cities and towns to repair a lot of roads in Brockton and the surrounding towns. Also, we get what's called CDBG money. That's Community Development Block Grants. That's federal dollars. That comes to cities like Brockton more for the inner core of the city to help fix the roads and infrastructure. And I know somebody asked about the infrastructure. So there is a lot of funding coming in to Brockton and the surrounding towns, plus $25 million for municipal bridge programs to repair some of the bridges. We have some bridges here in Brockton that go over the Salisbury River and that, but this is for the whole Commonwealth. And uh, also local bottleneck programs to help with traffic issues. As you know, traffic is terrible in Brockton, Boston, so there is $25 million coming in all over the state to help with traffic congestion. And also, because of our environment, we have $25 million coming in for more electric vehicles to get away from the fossil fuels and the oil companies that the oil companies are big corporations control too much we're moving forward with renewable energy and to clean the environment thank you um in as i see every morning in here okay but then come for ruas the brack i'm the premier ruin email the first street will be mine it's terrible uh even simple 25 milhões de dólares para comprar ruas para as ruas e chões estão mariados ali na Brasília. E outra coisa também para suportar trânsito, para mudar o trânsito, o tráfico ali na Brasília. Também na hora que meninos estão saindo de escola, coisa de encher o tráfico. Também que ela também serve para coisa de tráfico ali na Brasília. E a tudo, e a, já sei, já sei. Tudo que é dinheiro é, também serve na chão, na estrada, na, na pontes, um, tudo que é construção de chão que usa ali na Braca. Okay? Uh. Now, this is important, importante. If your road needs to be fixed, you have to call, you have to call the city hall or the, your local councilors. We get the money from the state. They decide with the mayor where the roads go. Now, there's different rules. CDBG money is more for the less fortunate parts of Brockton, the inner core of the city. Chapter 90 money is from the state, like Belmont Street. We used state money to repair Belmont Street before. Route 27, Pleasant Street, that was state funding. But we have to work with our local government to decide, like they have a wish list the worst streets and where they're going to get the funding. So we work with our local mayor and city council. And I want to thank the councilors that are here. I know Moises Rodriguez, Jack Lally, uh, Councilor Wynn Fowell, Councilor Susan Nacastro, and uh, I don't know if there's any other council here. But we all work together to decide where the worst streets are to get the funding for those. Um, uh, Turkey has ruas, as well as ruas, the dinheiro the fundo também de Estado. A moda e a que é mais é que as ruas principais ali, sim, a Belmont Street a, e a Warren Avenue, que as ruas mais principais de dinheiro também de Estado. Então, se as ruas que estão direto, se estão contacto, se estão o World Counselor ou Citywide Counselor, se estão contactados para moda esse trabalho tudo junto, então, se as que estão sabendo os problemas, se as que estão por aí, ajudam os que estão problemas. Então, nós temos que pôr os problemas na nos representantes, assim para que o representante leve esse problema, aquele problema para onde que essa estrada junto aqui na cidade, para se poder compor nos nos rua, ok? Uh, you guys, we have a question over here. Could Jerry? Yeah. Hi. Just. We have a question here, and it's it's in in, in um, it's on topic. Uh, yeah, I have a question, but please, uh, my English is not very well, but I try. Uh, I know uh, when I drive, I I live in Brockton for twenty one years, and uh, when I drive, sometimes I'm scared to drive in the night because some street in Brockton not have enough light. It's very dangerous. If we can do something about the, the light in Brockton. 
And uh, I have another question about the trash can. Thank you for the city give us the trash can, but uh, we need city roll think about uh, because in my house live 10 people. And uh, every day I take the trash out. And if I take uh, trash out for eight days, I have uh, eight bags of trash. And the, the trash can we have, we can put in the side just uh, two bags. Because when you, we put uh, three bags, it's gonna be four. If we, uh, city law can uh, see if you have something to do and uh, we don't need a, a trash bag, a trash can, uh, the, the side of the, the recycle, but please we need a, a large because uh, the, we don't have a money enough because in Brockton live more poor people than rich people. And for you guys can see that and help us to have a trash can better than we have. Please. Thank, thank you so much. Um, just there's probably two segments to that question about um, the renegotiation of the trash refuge. I think that's a city council topic. I don't think they've discussed it yet, but it, it's something that Maria will, can definitely follow up about later. Yeah. Jerry, did you want to speak to the infrastructure topic about lighting, inadequate lighting in the streets? Yeah, well, the, we get money from the state, like I mentioned, Chapter 90 money, so we present it to the city. The city decides where the money is going to be spent as far as lighting and infrastructure unless there's some rules in the state funding like a little while ago we got state funding to do main street over there was request to put in better lighting and so forth so it all depends if there's a specific street please let us know because some of these streets are decided between the city some it's decided how the state funding comes in but i agree we need better lighting in all of the city because it is dark at night so I, I will be happy to come over and get your information, then we can talk to the city officials as well on the specific streets you're talking about. Uh, as far as the trash cans, that's up to the city. They do contracts, and I don't know when the contracts come. Who? Okay, so we'll let Moises Rodriguez come up to talk about that. He's a council large and represents the citywide. Uh, the last couple of things I wanted to mention, I know somebody mentioned mental health out there. And I'm happy to talk with you afterwards. When the pandec pandemic happened, a lot of healthcare facilities were working virtually. People weren't meeting one-on-one -on -one with the residents. It was very difficult. So we passed the mental health bill, ABC, to bring more money into the Commonwealth to help people with mental health issues. Because there's two, there's two issues. We have people with addiction out there, drug addiction, alcohol addiction. There is a lot of funding for that, but not for people that have general mental health issues that don't have any addiction problems. So we passed this bill to help with a lot of reforms to ensure equitable access to mental health care and remove the barriers caused by supporting behavior mental health in the workforce. So the Senate passed that law this past year. Uh, the, the last thing I want to mention is that we're doing the budget and we passed legislation I'm going to leave my cards up there too. If you have any ideas what you think the state senate should do or the House of Representatives, please contact us. And there's a, an important piece of bill that I want just everybody to raise their hand when I ask the question. We passed some, some legislation for homeless IDs and relative adoption bills, but we, there's, a, a, there's a piece of legislation that's coming before the Senate to have people from other countries to be able to get a license. Now, they're not going to be able to vote because there's a lot of misinformation about that, but they will get access to get a license. You still have to go through the training. You have to go take the license test and all of that. You will have to get insurance, so your car will have to be insured, or your vehicle, whatever you drive. But I want to know if people are in favor of it or against it. I am getting a lot of calls on this. Most of the people I've gotten calls from are in support of this. It's going to be coming before the Senate maybe in March sometime. The House passed it, then it goes to the governor. But you will have to get proper training. You'll have to get go through the driver's exam. You can't just get your license for nothing. It's going to cost you some money. You also will have to get insurance. And you have to have a special form of ID, whether it's a passport or some ID. 
So it's to help people because I get a lot of calls from people that cannot get to the, you know, their husband may have a car, they cannot get to the market, they don't have license, but it's a bill proposed to give license to immigrants. So I just want to know what everybody feels. Essa está fala de lei que escreve foi para de imigrantes. Ok. Um, so, um, essa, essa também passa um, um lei que essa pergunta, como é, essa na, já passa no cenário, essa vai para casa. Agora, se ele pensar, vota na ele. Só que, ao contrário, já passa na casa, essa vai para o cenário. Então, essa pergunta, a ah, senhor está a favor que para alguém ilegal, desde que ele tenha uma identificação, ou passaporte, ou usa que tem foto na ele, que tem seus... Um, se as identificação, para dar as autorizações para esta carta de condução. Só que eles têm que ir bem, se mas não se bem. Então, tem que ir e, e pratica, tem que ter permita, tem que pratica para fazer licença. Então, custa um dinheiro, mas é melhor, é mais, é melhor do que se daqui a sair. Não está de favor? Não está de favor? Não está de favor aquela que levanta bom. Hey, the eyes have it. We have a question over here. Hello, my name is Elisa de Pina. I'm de Brava, but I have been living in Fogo for 14 years. I'm a senior formed in pastelaria and e culinary. A mim, eu faço uma formação no Cabo Verde, na pastelaria, na área de pastelaria culinária, onde que... Ok, thank you. Um, então, onde que eu faço uma formação no Cabo Verde e me era formadora na São Felipe Fogo. E, para além disso, eu tinha um business também, um bar-restaurante, onde que ainda fazia babolos para diversas eh, atividades e minha filha também ela é decoradora de festa um, mas para problemas de saúde em Cabo para bem para a América de visita uns 10 vezes não vi bem naquele dia 10 em Cabo para ficar ali e então minha sonho é continua e minha atividade é coisa que sempre em sonha, já tenho 23 anos naquela área e ainda moro ali na Brockton, embora pessoas estão para o que as vêm de outro lado, estão para mim. Coisa que boa já na vista na Brockton, se Brockton é uma cidade que não tem nada. É principalmente estrada onde que às vezes é coisa que está ligando a famílias, a amigos ou a clientes que estão também compra qualquer coisa ali na Brockton. Então, como que eu queria fazer um curso ilegal, não queria perguntar que me como uma senhora que tem sonho, não queria continuar com os sonhos. Então, queria perguntar, qual é que um, qual é que benefício de abrir um business ali na Brockton? Na, se tem algum business e algum business que está beneficiando a abri minha business. Uh, se tem algum apoio, se tem alguma ajuda, é, que não, que me não pode seguir no caminho para o Timor já decidi uh, ficar para ali. É, deixo um sonho para trás de teu anos, é um problema de saúde onde que, que te permite ser na Cabo Verde, em Cabo para bem ali. Uh, e outra coisa também de Brockton. É, que ele era minha pergunta e um outro curso de Brockton. Brockton, me gosta de Brockton. Me gosta de Brockton, é, às vezes está fazendo triste de sair de Brockton. Mas Brockton é um lugar que eu que eu libro um braco na estrada, você te torna para minha 4 com 5. Então que eu ponho 4 com 5, você contra com outro carro. Então a hora que você te compra um, um curso de nós, um carro, não cretene, não, não cre e protege ele também. Então, 
é a estrada onde que as coisas escutam o braço, então se sempre se reclama um primo de meu, uma, uh, uma brocton é, estrada é mau, uma brocton gente de papo é tudo mal de brocton, então onde ele acaba para dar um passeio dentro de brocton, onde que ele está francês? Então se leva a uma parte de brocton onde que ele é cabo de brancos, e, afinal, se é cabo de brancos na realidade, então brancos têm bom estrada. E é tudo dentro de Brockton. Então, como que aquela outra parte de Brockton também que se beneficia, ou mesmo coisa de estrada, principalmente de Brockton? Outra coisa. Maria Tavares foi uma mulher que bateu na porta de tudo o nosso crioulo para não votar na ele. Mas Maria Tavares tem que ficar para saber uma coisa. Uma hora que é que faz é nada para Brockton, ou tu volta que eu vou bater na porta de ninguém. Senhores que têm direito, de da Maria Tavares, alguma permissão de fazer alguma coisa para realmente não sequer crioulo, ali na Brockton, que ele tem estado que pedir para não votar para ele, então Maria Tavares tem que te fazer alguma coisa, porque na próxima volta que te recebe ali na porta. Então, quem de direito que Maria se está a fazer parte de na Siri Hall, se ele está com ele é deputado, ou ela é deputada ali na Brockton, então está espera que Maria Tavares está faz alguma coisa, para uma para a próxima volta, é meu de que que minha volta que a conta com ela. Obrigada. She, uh, she gave a lot of all the information. This is like a whole day a meeting that we need to address. Uh, it's, I, myself, I don't think it's appropriate for this time. So maybe there's something that it can be uh, done later on. Uh, he's, she's asking, she said that she's had a lot of dreams, uh, she was a baker, and if there is any help that she can get, I'm going to do it as best as I can to translate. For businesses, um, so uh, there is, uh, if there is any help that we can do for a business so she can continue her dreams. Essa flama está se bobeia na downtown, no lugar de, de comércio. Uh, este de grants que ajuda que esta da para para uh, quem é que quer formar seu business, mas vou ter que qualificar para ele. Portanto, vou também lá, vou dar a pergunta mais informação, esta da altura informação de que os grants que está lá. Yeah, the, the Chamber of Commerce is there to help small businesses, to start up businesses, the only county planning council, and also the Downtown Brockton Association. Then we have a Campolo Business Association down the south side, a Montello Business Association the north side, but also the governor was in Brockton at Luanda's restaurant this week. There is grants that mainly were helping out businesses that suffered during the pandemic. Two, last year, because of the pandemic, we got funding for certain businesses in Brockton and downtown that got small appropriations. And they initially were supposed to be loans, and they became grants, so they did not have to pay them back. But there is funding out there and help through different organizations to help out for new startup businesses or existing businesses. And there's money in the state coming into Brockton for that. Então, se me já falava antes, está, e, está dinheiro que te ajuda alguém que já tem esse negócio e que te ajuda alguém cria, que cria, para alguém que está a criar esse negócio. Então, vai lá na downtown, no lugar de, de, de comércio, na onde que você está bem, essa dá mais informação para aquela. Yeah. O melhor lugar que tem é lá na lugar, ali no lugar de comércio, ali na downtown Brockton, é de beira de, de lugar de cidade. Chambers of Commerce, okay? Yes, oh, sorry, hi everyone. We have another question right here. My name is Maria. Um, I have three grandchildren, nine, five, and, and three years old. 
I want to know why there's no free preschool for all the kids in Brockton. Because um, my son, the one that has the three kids, he's the only one that works for his family. He's the one that pays the mortgage. He's the one that, that buys the food and do everything. So he's the, the, bread, um, the provider. So I have to help out to pay the, my grandchildren preschool because when they try to get a free one, they didn't give it to them because my son worked. His wife does not work. So I need to know why there's no preschool for all the children in Brockton. Thank you. We did pass several years ago for full day kindergarten in Brockton and to get money for preschool. I don't know if there's any school committee members here today. And now I have a three years old. Now, now, if I may ask, is it private school or public school? I paid for private school because okay. they couldn't well, get into public school right. for well, preschool. That's a good question because private school we do not pay for through the city or anything. Public school we do. I paid for private school because they can't get into public school. Yeah. What was the reason you couldn't get into the public school? They were like three, four years old, so I have to pay for right. preschool for them to get into kindergarten. Okay. Now I have a three years old. Do I have to pay for my son again yeah. for I, him to go to preschool? I, I, Why they don't get help? It's just because my son works and the wife doesn't work. Just because he works, they don't give him a free school for the kid? You know what? Great question. We actually are in the presence of a school committee member. Tony Rodriguez, I appreciate you just... He just arrived, but this man is a superstar in our community. Put your hands together. Tony Rodriguez. Tony, can you come we're, up? Here? We're going to get to the bottom of this right now. Not to put you on the spot, this, this is one of our school committee members. Good evening, a little late. Um, I believe it was with pre-K and kindergarten. There isn't going to be a lottery we, um, before the whole pandemic uh, started. We actually increased the classes up to eight, so every child will be going full day. There's not going to be a half day where the kid goes in the morning and one goes in the afternoon. But the cat, every child in the city block will be going. And what is the age do they start? What age? Yeah, for preschool. Four. four. You're four or five. It, 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 well, I mean, you have to look at when the child's birthday is. Are you talking about kindergarten or are you talking about preschool? And pre-K. And pre Preschool, pre -K yeah, preschool. Yeah, that's what I want. Yes, yeah. Because I tried with my two older, older uh, grandkids, they couldn't get into public kindergarten. Okay. I mean, public preschool. Yes, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the funding that was was you know got put on hold. So we approved everything prior to the pandemic, but all that's opened up. But I'll give you my card so I can you know look into your situation further. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Love it. Thank you, Tony. Guys, if we just could get somebody new who, who has not asked the question already. Here we go. Hello. Boa tarde. Minha nome é Maria Lopes. Um sata de uma praia para emergência rumo desde 2019. Está nesse momento na Chalta. E as qualificam para casa, as famílias estão em Velibó desde mês de outubro. Então, já dá tudo prova que eles pediam, já estou na espera mais três meses que estou na flan e própria linda, linda que está trabalhando na coisa de casa, é flan panca choma, panca chega lá, mora os que me está, é tá choma, já espera, já espera, não pensava mas na Natal ainda estava a mandar a casa e ainda está à espera, não está direito para morar em casa na rua, graças a Deus, mas não tenho vontade de estar dentro da casa que eu lhe assinei um beijo, me deu um catachinho, e me tem a voz alta, para morrer que ele tem a voz de natureza, e tudo bem, se não abre a boca, eu falo, cala a boca. Então, não está direito, mas, não está livre de cima da cresta, e me está por ir para a renda, porque se uma casa já subiu dentro do prato, e as minhas famílias têm casa para mim, e não me deixe que me perguntar na que lista que está esse cataflão, a minha casa é a minha, 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 a minha casa
mas por me ter chamado e que tá fazendo aquilo isso aqui, está nem para ficar com mais esperança. So she's saying that she applied for a housing since 2019, and she's been uh, on the waiting list. She's turned in all the paperwork, and uh, Linda, uh, that works there, tells her that uh, she doesn't have to keep calling, that she will get back to her uh, when it's her turn. So she's been living in shelter, and she's asking how long is she's going to be waiting. There is a major waiting list people, hundreds and hundreds of people trying to get into housing. I'm going to get your information, your phone number. I will call the housing authority tomorrow too. They, they are in the process of trying to renovate all the buildings for the housing authority. Also, besides the shelter, are you at the shelter on Main Street? No. Uh, Carlton House? Yes. Yeah. Or Middleborough? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to get your information. I will call the housing authority tomorrow. And there's other questions I have to ask you. If you applied for just Brockton or statewide housing, because there is a major backup for people trying to get housing. We put more funding into that, but like the, the buildings in Brockton, they need major renovations. I know the, the Camper Law High Rise down the south side is going to be renovated. Kennedy Drive is going to be renovated, but I'm going to get the information, okay? Okay, thank you so much. You will need to take more information on the way. Uh huh. It's a take more information on the way. Um, it's a contact. Hi, so I'm Jamie Hodges. I'm a local Ward Two resident. And I just have a question about the um, funds that we are going to be receiving for the school. Uh, is that money going to be used for a new high school, or are we going to keep building soccer fields that aren't going to be maintained? No, that, the money coming from the Student Opportunity Act is just for the existing schools. It has nothing to do with the new high school. There, no. There's a lot of discussion. Like we years ago, and I know you can't live in the past, we got 90% reimbursement from the state to build five elementary schools. That's one of the buildings we're sitting in now. But this money is only for inside the schools, and it's and it's decided between the school committee where the money is spent within the schools for training and testing and new teachers and all of that inside the building. It has nothing to do with the new high school. So, is there going to be plans for a new high school in the future, or is that not enough? That's up to the city and whether the residents, because. I can't answer for the city officials, but I understand. But right now, I don't know if there's money to build a new high school. That that building was built in 1970, and it cost quite a bit of money, and it's going to cost more money. I know that the city has plans, like over over uh, on West Elm Street, to build a new um, public safety infrastructure building with the with the um, police station, the fire station, and Brockton Emergency Management. But do you want to answer that? Uh, in regards to the. Uh to the new high school, if we're going to build a new one, there's a, a application process that goes to the state building committee. What they do is they review our application, and it's a once we get accepted into the program, it's a six to eight year process. So what they do is they uh, they do a top to bottom analysis across the city. They could either tell us to knock down the school and build a new one, or they could find a different location within the city for us to build a new brand new high school. So everything relies on the state. So that's the and I will say that nobody's come to me other than, you know, a discussion amongst friends about a new high school, but there's a big issue. They, as, as the school committee member Tony mentioned, you send in the application to the school building assistance, yes, but it is a long process, and I haven't heard anything about enough funding to, for a new high school. Thank you, and I want to thank everybody, and I want to thank Maria Tavares. Anybody wants to talk to me afterwards, I'm going to be here. And I'll give you my information uh, for the housing situation. But also, uh, I'll leave my phone number, too, because there is a lot of other funding coming into Brockton, and we want to make sure it's spent wisely. And if there's anything specific, plus with the budget that the state is doing, the governor presents a budget, goes to the House of Representatives, and it goes to the Senate. So we'll get it probably close to the April and May. Thank you, everybody. Over God. Th thank you so much. Um, we, uh, you guys, we had another question, just real quick, and go ahead. 
Hi, uh, my name is Jed Resker. I live downtown in uh, Ward 5. Um, I, it's more of a comment. I also came from the Traffic Commission meeting a minute ago, but I'm, I'm listening to the comments that were said here earlier, I, inviting us to submit our suggestions about what potholes to fix, what streets to fix, uh, what street lights, and at the Traffic Commission was sort of a similar process that happened. Uh, ma many people were in the audience and, and told the commission their ideas. And I think it's great that our elected officials are asking for our input, <clears throat> but I wonder, doesn't the city do its own audit, its own study? You're telling me that there's never been, does public works not like take an accounting of the condition of the streets? I mean, I find this sort of unbelievable, it's sort of after the fact. So, you know, a young man gets killed, Tony, uh, forgive me, I'm not saying his name right, Tony Sostra, and, and then we're, we're, we're figuring out what to do about it after the fact. And the same thing with the potholes. I mean, I use the app, the C Click Fix. The app is great. People should use it. But do does this city do anything proactive like that? Like, is there a list of priority streets that need to be fixed? For example, when I was involved with campaigning last year, we heard crazy things like each city councilor gets seven streets they get to recommend for a fix, and that's it. So, so that's basically my question. Like, is there a methodical, systematic way that this city and DPW deals with lights, streets, potholes, or is it just this, we're going to give you suggestions? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I, I, one thing I just... I'm just going to ask a quick... Uh, actually, it's such a great question. Uh, I'm going to call Moses Rodrigo to answer that question for you. Moses, can you come up here and answer the question for me, please? No worries. I'll reiterate the question for the benefit of everyone in the audience. And uh, so Moses has an opportunity to get to the to the podium. Okay. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> well, first of all, I just wanted to say something that we got to be clear about the lines of authority. You know, you've got the federal government that deals with the, the country's issues. You got the state government that deals with the state issues, and then you got city officials that deal with city issues. Yeah, like the issues that the, the, the young lady was talking about, the housing issue. We in local government have very little to do with housing. We don't have vouchers to give people. We don't have uh, Section 8 vouchers to give anybody. We don't have resources to give. We don't have the authority over the housing other than appointing or or checking off on the commissioners that they put into housing if it's the housing authority. But you know, there's also state housing that we have nothing to do with. You know, so I think it's important for us, yes, it's good to, you know, to bring up these questions, but we gotta be realistic about who has the authority to answer those questions. And we can't sit here and sometimes, I know you guys are frustrated with some issues. I'm frustrated with some issues. You know, people sometimes say, how come our taxes are going up? Don't you think my taxes are going up too? My taxes go up. I pay taxes in the city, and I'm tired of paying taxes, you know? But it's, it's the issues that we have to look at it and say, what are we able to do and not do? Now, let's talk about the roads. The roads. I don't know if you guys remember this, but just recently, uh, we passed a little bit of um, a user fee to go along with some uh, water rates in the city. That user fee was to be able to generate some funds so we can fix the pipes. Do you know that the pipes in the city are over 100 years old? We have one of the worst pipes in the community, but we don't want to go back and ask the taxpayers more tax money to do this. It should be people that use the water, the towns in Whitman, the um, um, Whitman, East Bridgewater, some of these other communities that use water that also should pay for water issues. So we instituted a little bit of a fee so we can go out and borrow some money and do the pipes over. <clears throat> now this thing works two ways. When we do the pipes, we can fix the pipes. And once we fix the pipes, we can fix the roads. So a lot of times if you see a road that's in real tough shape, we need to figure out exactly what the piping is underneath it as well because it makes no sense for you to do a street over. A few years later, you gotta come back and rip it all out again to put new pipes in. So if you have a street that's in real tough shape, 
get in touch with your ward council. You know, get in touch with some of the counselors. We might be able to put that on the list or at least find out whether or not it's on the list to get fixed up. And that's what we need to start doing. It's, it's, it's nice to just sit here and cast blame on everybody, but you know what? We, we, honestly, there's not a single person that's sitting in city government or sitting in this room that doesn't want to see nice streets, that don't want, doesn't want to see safe streets, that doesn't want to see illuminated streets. We want to see all of those as well. But sometimes you got to be realistic and say, you know what? Some of us taxpayers are tired of paying taxes. And the only way we can actually improve life for people in this city is to increase resources. We can't, I mean, you've got people who are running for office that say things like, you know, I'm going to reduce your taxes, I'm going to fix your schools, I'm going to fix your roads, I'm going to fix this and fix that. Well, how are you going to do that? You know, you got to be realistic about it to say, you want your taxes to go down or stay down? We can do that. But you know what? Resources suffer as well. And you got to be realistic about that, and that's how we're going to do that. Now, <clears throat> I just got some pictures from somebody that sent me pictures of a street in this city. That if you think your streets are bad, you should see this, these pictures. You know, it's awful. We had a rough winter so far, and these things are popping out everywhere. These potholes are popping out everywhere, and it's becoming a problem. But you know what? Resources need to come into the community from the state, from the federal government, to help us fix this. Taxpayers aren't going to pay for it. Certain street in Brockton, you go there and you're like, I'm in Brockton, and then you go to other street, like this lady said, it's a third world country. Why? You can't, because. I know why. So what is the difference between the country club and Northside? A lot of times it is because you know what it is. It's people who basically are proactive in reaching members of their government. Remember that old saying that squeaky, no, Moses, the squeaky wheel. Moses, stop. The country club, we all know most of city council. I don't. You don't. You live on Summer Street. Summer Street got a nice road not too long ago. No. Yes, they do, because I drive there, down that street all the time. I've been there 10 years, and it hasn't been done in 10 years. Moses, let's stop. I'm just saying. Summer Street has a nice road compared to other streets around Summer Street. Perkins Ave, horrible. Yeah. And that's right near Summer Street. You go by the country club, wonderful streets. They get cleaned. They get everything. The other streets, they don't get clean. There's trash all over the place. I was driving down Main Street by Court Street and Pleasant Street. Somebody was taking a dump in the middle of the daylight on that street. This is where you want business to come? This is where you want our kids to live? She just had a sign that says she's going to maintain the street. How is she going to maintain the street? You can turn around and ask her that. Well, I can tell you one thing. I can tell you one thing. First and foremost, the fact that you, I've been living on Summer Street for 10 years. I've been in the city council for eight years. Do you think, and when I, I've been there for 10 years, they haven't fixed the road. It had a road, but it wasn't fixed. So you think that me being in the city council for eight years and living on Summer Street for 10 years, that that has something to do with my road being the way it is? Yes. Why is that? I wasn't a city councilor. I'm just saying, you know what, it's easy. It's, but that's, you brought it up. You brought it up, though, and you make it sound like because it's my street and my street's being fixed because I'm a city council, and that's not the case. Yeah, you, you guys, just I'm just gonna. Most... I can't tell you why certain places look the way they are, but the issue is it's that old issue of demanding. We don't demand enough. We don't demand enough. We show up once in a while during elections to complain about issues. We don't show up all the time to demand what we need to demand. I show up all the time. I we don't. We're not talking about we. Because we know there's certain people here that show up all the time. It's who you know in the city. And sometimes when you speak too much, you get blacklisted. Like, I'm blacklisted right now. I just spoke to you right now that I have no heat because the permanent inspector cannot come out in the rain to give me heat. Okay, that's ridiculous. I'm paying taxes and I can't get the inspector to come out to give me heat and he has the nerve to tell me 
that he can come out in the rain. His boss had the nerve to tell me that I should not go to the city council and go all over his head. Huh. So don't tell me this. Don't tell me that we don't complain. Because the ones that complain all the time are the ones that are put in this list of categories that they can't get things done. Did you, did you tell the mayor about this? Did you talk to the mayor about this? Who oversees that department? I'm just saying that everybody answers to somebody. If I go to my city council, yeah. my boss, uh -huh. and I bring to him an issue, and then the head of the building inspectors is calling me, telling me how dare I go over his head. So did and you after that, my permit, to, I've been working on my house now for a year and a half. I can't get a permit done without me staying quiet and playing nice and not saying anything. Because when I do voice my opinion, when I do complain, or if I'm linked to a certain person, then I can't get stuff done in the city. The city is about who you know, who's your godparents, who you link yourself with. That's just what the matter Did you go back to that counselor and talk to that counselor about that? Yeah, he's a wonderful counselor. So what happened? And he tried his hardest to, to help me. He tried very hard to help me, okay? I'm not going to take credit from people that deserve the credit. But let's be honest here. This city is full of crap. This city does what it wants for who it wants to do. There's no reason why we're going to have a blizzard or whatever we're having tomorrow, and I cannot get the heat in my house. There's no reason why I'm being told that I can't go out in the rain. It's your goddamn job to go out in the rain to get, make sure that we have heat. There's no reason why. So unless you have a reason to tell me why. I don't. The city uh, that you work for, I shouldn't have to go to the mayor. I should not have to go to the mayor. You guys should be doing your job, which is making sure that every resident has what they need. No, 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 no. I'm saying if, if you call the, oh, hold on a second. You call the city councilor, the city councilor made the thing that he needed to do or she needed to do for you, and you still don't get the response. Don't you think that that person answers to the mayor? They work for the mayor. They don't work for the city council. I shouldn't have to do that. You guys have a job to do. Who's you guys, though? But the mayor put him in that job. It wasn't the city council that put him there. My point is, if I need something done, and I go to the person to get it done, that person should do it. I should not have to go to the mayor. That's my point. The mayor would probably look at it and say, you know what? I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm going to let you guys do it. The mayor would probably love to hear that you're not getting the services that you need to get. So you need to communicate that to him. You know what I'm saying? Communicate it up so that he knows what you're saying. It, I would, I would continue to do what you're doing. I, what did I just tell you? And what did I just tell you? I emailed you five times. When I, when I was the mayor, when I was the mayor of the city. Every time you saw me, you like, oh, yeah, send me this. Send me an email. I sent you the email. No response. You guys, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for this conversation back and forth. But we'll, we'll take this offline just because um, we... We want to come to some resolution on this, and we want to move forward with the program. So we have another question. Thank you. I do, and it's directly for Moises, and he's here standing saying, guys. I'm done for the night. That goes to show how many respect you guys have for the people here. Because I came from that side and I walked right in front of you and told you I have a question. You said, okay, I got you. You went there, you asked that lady, you came to ask this gentleman, you asked him right and then you gave it to her. That goes to show how much respect you guys have for people that have that, that lives in this community. Okay, I'm sorry for that. That was not my fault. But this is going from Wizes. He say we don't do it enough. He say Kivet in community, we don't do enough, we don't ask enough. I come to Muise because I have a business. I have a, uh, I have a uh, gift shop. I'm looking for license. And nobody can ask, nobody can answer the question. I come to Muise 
I talked to Moises. I had a meeting with Moises. I'm still waiting for him. He didn't call me back, block my number, never call me again, nor even tell me, I can't help you. Let me guide you for somebody that can help you. That's what we're dealing with the city hall here. We go there, they see us, then the next day they don't know who you are. So I am here trying to find a help. I was in city hall today. I spoke with five people in city hall today. Nobody can guide me to the direction I need to be. So you telling me my English is a second language. I struggle. I try to do and I try to ask. Yes, we do come forward. Some people cannot stand here and speak because our English is a second language. They're afraid how they're going to put words. Moisés represent us. He represent Kevin. He should know how our community work. He should know how to help us. No pause behind the door. Tell me, Moisés, we don't do enough. Tell me what you do with all the conversation, the media I have with you and the Kevin uh, Association and uh, everything we're talking about. Tell me what you do about it. We don't do enough. What do you do about that? Well, let me tell you something. Actually. Actually, this is what I was saying, that there's a process that actually takes place. And sometimes our, our people don't understand that there are processes that you go through. Your issue with the alcohol license, okay? I remember it because that's what you wanted to do. You want, no, I'm just, you brought it up, so I'm gonna bring it up as well. You, you wanted to, to be able to sell alcohol like you have a, a, a liquor store, I mean a liquor store. Liquor stores are controlled by forces beyond the city until the laws change so we can allow uh, more uh, multiple licenses. I cannot, I cannot basically make a license for you. So I'm still in the process that believe it or not, you might say that it's not being done. I'm still in the process. As a matter of fact, I think last year in the council, we basically passed a, 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 um, an ordinance to increase the number of licenses. But, it, but you know what it does? It takes time to get done. It doesn't get done overnight. So now, you are, now you're saying here, ask Tim Cruz that I was actually fighting for the license so you could get a license. But the point is, the point is, it's a long process. It's not something that's done just like that. What I'm saying is, you don't have to come and tell me that. You could tell me that. I don't have to come and say it here in the middle of this people. You brought it I didn't up. have to. I didn't have to brought it up here. If you return my call and say, hey, yeah. this is what's going to happen. I, I think I told you that there was no license. No, you, were in the process you blocked my that. phone call. That's what you did. I blocked your phone call? Yes. I don't think so. Yes, you did. I don't think so. Yes, you did. <laughs> OK. All right. Uh, you guys also, I want to highlight for anyone who didn't get a chance to ask a question, now's the opportunity. Now's the opportunity. Does anyone want to ask a question? All right. Here we go. Well, it's not, it's not about not being civil. Let's make sure we get that across. It's not about not being civil. I'm trying to be as humble as I can. Okay. I'm just... All right. All right. The question is, we all know that when we get our elected officials to the polling, the, mo the most thing that they do is say what they can't do or what they're trying to do. It's time to get it done. We're tired, tired of hearing, oh, we're going to get it done. We got this much money. We know how much money you guys get. We hear it all the time. It's time to put it in action. It's time to do it. And our sidewalks, when it snows, everybody knows. It doesn't get plowed. And we have to walk our kids through the uh, snow to get them to school. You guys all know that. Moises, you know that. So let's do something to get it fixed. Um, what else? Our roads. I have it on my, before I came here. My street, ridiculous. You can't even, you, you. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, I'm aggravated, sorry, guys. I'm, yeah, my road, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to anybody that wanna see. You can't, you can't tell that, you know, people pay taxes on that road. It's like, I don't pay no taxes because that road is shitty. Excuse my French. 
We need to do better. We need to do better, it's time to do it. You guys said how much money we have and how much we, money we get in. Let, yeah, let's, let's get it done. We says, another, th another reason why we should get it done. You should get with few of your buddies, few of your friends, few of your colleagues and say, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Yes, sir. And um, another thing is, Musa, as you said, oh, uh, let's not push blame. We're not, we're trying to hold you guys accountable. That's all we're trying to do. Hold you accountable for what you say you're gonna do. Because when you knock on our door and say, I want your vote, we wanna make sure that when you get there, you sit on the table with this gentleman right here, this gentleman right there, and you guys said, you know what, let's work it and get things done. Thank you so much. You guys, thank you so much. I mean, now, I appreciate a lot has been said today, and the city councilors, I know they're working hard. I know they're working hard to deliver on all the promises that you guys believe that Brocky can deliver for us as residents. One of the topics that was a central theme tonight was the topic about road pavement and water quality. And what we're all fortunate to benefit from is that right now, um, we have the U.S. Infrastructure Act that was passed here in America. And money came, is coming to the city of Brockton over the next three years, and we should be getting at least $66 million. Now, how much is required to fix all the roads in Brockton to get them to you know, top condition? We have an idea. We have an idea. It's probably about $175 million. And you might say, Jamal, where did that number come from? The reality is that, so in Ward 7, the city council has approved about $19 million to improve road works and water mains there. Now, if we were to take that number, multiply it by ten, times seven, you're gonna get to about 133 million. And if you gross that up a little bit more for a margin of error, you get about 175 million. Now that's an open, open uh, figure, that's my estimate. I believe that uh, just to address the topic about how would we get there, what I'm asking for is that before the city council approves the next fiscal year 220, 2023 budget, they'll do that in the month of June. I'm asking, can the DPW or can the city council at least earmark monies for a, a plan to document how we're gonna get the roads to a certain level of quality? It, and I'm hoping the city council is gonna work to achieve that, but we would I'd like to see a plan versus no plan. And uh, I'll pause. Oh yeah, hold up. We're passing over to Moses. Okay. You do know the functions of the city council, right? To approve the budget. Okay. We are not the executive branch. We don't execute uh, work. We don't fix roads. We don't do any of those things. We need to make sure that we understand, and we're not selling people short. Because this is the thing, I don't care if I get one vote from anybody, but the thing is I'm not gonna sell you short. The idea of promising things, we need to understand what our roles are. You know, our job is not to fix roads. Our job is when the mayor comes looking for funds, we approve the funding to fix the roads. We don't build buildings, the city council doesn't. We are the legislative branch of city government. The executive branch builds things. We approve and deal with the funds. So we can't sit here and say we're gonna to put together some plans to, to pay for roads because we don't create plans. Our function, city council's function, is not to create plans to generate money. That's not your job. Our job is to approve whatever the executive branch brings on to us. So let's not sell people short because people think that we're gonna go out and build things that the council is going to build this, the council is going to build that. That's not the job of the council. We need to make sure we understand that. Go ahead, sir. You want to ask something? Yeah. Can I, can I add something? No, hold on. Let, let him ask. Yeah, hi. I'm sorry. My name is, my name is Patrick Quinn. I, I, I'm going to take off my mask. I live in Ward 7. I'm really happy Maria had this meeting tonight. I know tonight a lot of people tonight were talking about road repaving and stuff. And I'm sure City Council Moses Rodriguez and Maria and other city councilors, Shirley Azak, Rita Mendez is here and Jack I can talk about the city has for now, I think almost 15 years now, a pavement management program, right? 
It's right there on the city website. So when you talk about your streets needing pavement, we took, the city decided years ago to take the politics out of it. So years ago they decided, let's not have city council decide, I get this street, that person gets that street. They took the politics out of it. And they, we create a pavement management program. This enables the city to analyze the streets within the city to determine the worst streets in need of repair. Listen, this is very important, people. So when you hear, when you hear people telling you that I'm a city councilor, or this city council gets to decide what street gets paved, that's actually incorrect knowledge. The knowledge is this. All of us collectively, almost 15 years ago, created what's called the Pavement Management Program. It's right there still on the city website. Okay? This is, it analyzes our streets. It needs to be updated every so often. And it decided which streets need to be paved based on the worstness of them, not based on your political knowledge or your friendship with the city elected officials. So we all need to know that. We have a pavement management program that all of us need to be on top of and say, hey, let's see what the new pavement management program says about our streets this year or last year and figure out which ones are going to get paid based on that program. No more should we be talking ever again that city councilors get to choose what street they get to pay, get paid. That is not true. We have a pavement program, so if you ever get a letter from anyone or anyone saying that's the way it is, that's incorrect. Collectively, when we know what the rule of law is and the path to find success, we'll all find a better success. And if we can all know that the, that the pavement management program that some of us might need to learn more about, myself included, then they will know, all of us, what streets are getting paid based on some type of analysis on the detriment of those streets to our community. Well, didn't this segment of it, if we do have that pavement, you said pavement management, management uh, program, Well, hold on, hold on. I agree with you. Hold on. I'm just going to drop. I'm sorry. I agree with you, but it's all about money and all kinds of stuff. But what I'm getting at is that the decision on which streets to get paved has already been decided by a management program system, not by an elected official. Well, you know what? We're all this year going to get in touch with our city councilors, our mayor, and say, hey, I want to know what's, what, the, what is the, the most recent information on the pavement management program is. I want to know what streets are getting paved this year. Let's all do this collectively and know so we can take the politics out of it and start finding solutions and stop bickering about the problems. We spend too much time talking about the problems because you know why? It's fun. Solving things takes more energy, actually. It really does. So let's solve that issue of paving our streets by making sure we all know there's a pavement management program. The next step is where do we get the funds? Sometimes it's federal, sometimes it's state, sometimes it's city. The first step is knowing that we're never going to ask the question again, hey, city councilors, can my street get paved? There should already be an analysis somewhere that we all go to, collect and go, that's what it is. That's all I have to add about the pavement streets. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and pass the program back over to our host, Maria Tavares. Well, that's, that's actually what I was going to say. I mean, this is actually her award meeting. And we've turned this into a bickering session for everybody else. Uh, it's supposed to be for residents of Ward 2 to address the Ward Councilor from Ward 2 with issues concerning Ward 2. You know, these things are done citywide in different places so that they can actually address that. But I don't know if we actually got to address anything from Ward 2 because it became uh, a, a mudslinging um, job for all of us so there you go well we here <laughs> thank you well uh basically i invite everybody you know they ask a question that's why i bought you guys here to ask the question if in case i don't know how to ask the question well i'm back now if you guys have any question or concern sure Okay, are you asking me a question or are you trying to correct it? What do you All right. Are you okay? As far as you hear, everybody was complaining about the road stuff based on the campaign. Those I draft the concern based on the campaigns. And then the reason I invite everybody, I put that together. 
then for people to understand how can we collaborate with the city and what's the concern of what you do have. Like she just said to you, just said to everybody, uh, Maria, on like, some side of the, the road is so bad. And then, like, you know, my understanding is a new city council, I mean, try to run the system right now, it's what you vocated for the community. Well, I gotta put something together to call those folks, that's why I call everybody here today. Because I know it's a lot of question, it's a lot of concern, even myself, I do have a lot of question. As a new process, I invite everybody, in case I cannot ask the question, which is so great, I think they did it very well, I'm very appreciated, because I think they answer everybody's question. Because I know all those questions they have, I always have the same question they do. I don't know if I answer your question or not. That's, that's the, our goals. It's not because I said I'm gonna do, because like as a city councilor, I don't have no power to do so. But well, because you, the voters, the one that has the power. The voters, the one that's gonna tell me how to do so, and then I'm gonna go advocate on their behalf. Not necessarily because I'm not gonna do. Even me, I cannot do. Even he tried to do something, the city council may sometimes has to pass. That's my understanding. I hope this is my goal, and then I'm looking to partner with the community, and in the way we can collaborate and advocate it and work together to make that happen. Whether it was English to Criollo or Criollo to English, some stuff was missing. So we need to make sure that if we're given information, special um, Brady, Senator Brady had a lot of good information that he was saying, and a lot of those things were not translated. She had a lot of good things that she said, and that was not translated. So we have to make sure that we're translating the right information, both in English and in Cape Verde. So if I can suggest next time, we get a if you can get a professional that can translate both language, that would be welcome. And it would be more appropriate for everybody to get the same information in both language and not a summary of what somebody said. I totally agree with you. I'm so sorry. I know sometimes it's not easy to translate because you know they just go like and on and on. But like uh, I invite all the city officials. I invite the mayor. I wish like he was here, like he's, he's not here. And uh, I hope next meeting, because I plan to continue to do this, because I, uh, you know, I hope you show up next time. And then I'm very appreciated everybody's here, because the same concern you guys have, that's the same thing I have, and that's why we're here to do this together. I put it. I, no, yes. Yeah. I totally agree with you. And then like today here, I'm just taking all my notes today for all the question and concern. And then I'm totally agree. Um, I hope city next time does better with the tongue later because unfortunately somebody gets volunteered and then I hope, like, you know, they here today, uh, we can do better. And uh, I appreciate it. I'm sorry. And uh, I don't know if anybody have any question. No, let me just say the last word. Thank you so much. Uh, my number is right there. If he, anybody ever have, like, you know, any question or concern, email me, text me, call me uh, anytime. And thank you so much for being here. And then I hope to see you, like, you know, here for three months. We're going to do this again.